is cold today, y'all. <laughs> had to do the video in my jacket because I only got a little bit of gas. I don't want to burn it out. Can't run the heater. But anyway, what's up, you guys? It's Rocks with just a little bit of talk about what's at the top of the block. So let's get to it. First up, let's talk about this football player, this Samoan football player. I think his name is Tekeo. Um, Y'all know now I'm gonna mess up the names. The Samoan football player who was in, um, he was in the running for the Heisman Trophy. And uh, he played for Notre Dame, I believe. And uh, let me see if I can get this name right. See, I had it all the way wrong. It's Manti Teo. Is that it? Anyway, Manti, he, um, he was trying to get he, he was in the running for the Heisman Trophy shortly before the Heisman Trophy winner was announced his grandmother passed and you know everybody felt sorry for him and uh, we also had word that his girlfriend of I guess a couple of years had also died from cancer everybody was feeling all sorry for him and everything but it did not garner him the Heisman Trophy the story was done and then uh, deadspin.com I think that's the name of the blog um, they decided to do some background um, research on Mr. Manti. Is that his name? Yeah, Manti. So as they started to look, they they found out that maybe this girlfriend of his did not exist. Now, the girl's name was supposed to be... <laughs> all these names. Lene Kekia, I think. And this is supposed to be the girlfriend that Deadspin is saying never existed. Now they're saying that she was either made up by Manti um, trying to get the sympathy vote or they're saying that she was made up by somebody else and that he was a victim of a catfish. Of course the story gets all crazy because originally Manti said that he met the girl and they exchanged numbers and that's how they had the relationship. That's how the relationship got started um, and supposedly she was the love of his life. Oh my goodness it's shaking. The car is shaking. The wind is blowing so hard and uh, she lived in a different state I suppose and they mostly kept in touch online or over the phone then the story also came out that no he never met her and that he met her online and um, you know they kept on this online relationship up until the time that she died from cancer and of course the other story is that the homegirl ain't never existed and that he made her up um, in order to get the sympathy vote now the the other crazy part of the story that comes in is there's a guy in uh, Arizona who plays for the Arizona Cardinals and he's saying I think his name is Reagan and uh, Reagan is saying no I actually met Lene back in Samoa back in the day and she did exist she has a family um, I'm close to the family we were friends and um, you know I don't know if Manti actually ever physically met her in person but yes yeah, she did definitely exist and if that story isn't crazy enough there is also a press conference where one of the coaches I believe from Notre Dame um, says that Manti uh, let his coaches know on December 26th which was my birthday that he received a call uh, while he was in, the, in in LA at the ESPN Awards or something like that and it was the girl's voice and the girl saying that she was not dead okay so it's this everybody is now the coaches are trying to say that he was a victim of a catfish and that somebody had created this whole person and made him think that he was in a relationship with the person and but you know the whole thing that's crazy about that is did you or did you not meet this woman if you met her and if she was your girlfriend, I mean, wouldn't you know if she was dead if you went to the funeral? Wouldn't you know if she was dead if, if you saw that she was actually very, very ill from cancer and dying like on her deathbed? Like that part doesn't make sense. And I'm not really sure if he's just saying if he's trying to save face and, and spare himself the embarrassment of getting into a relationship with somebody for two years and never really seeing them. Um, it, which is so crazy to me, but you guys know it exists. It, it, it exists because of the show Catfish and in the movie Catfish. I mean, people are so lonely out there and uh, people are so caught up in the fantasy of creating um, this whole alternative life that you do know that people do create a whole online persona that's totally different than what the reality is. So... Yeah, you guys, the story is crazy. It gets crazier at the moment. I personally think that the man was lying, that there was never anybody that existed. Um, and uh, he 
you know, he just basically got the story started and it's just gotten away from him now because now it just changes at the, you know, with the each day comes a new story. So anyway, you guys tell me what you think. Do you guys think that old man T is telling the truth? Do you think that the girl existed and that he had an online relationship? Do you think that he just made her up? Do you think that he um, physically met her and that it went awry? I mean, just like, what do you guys think? Leave it in the comment section below. Our basketball players be doing the most out there, you guys. Let's get started with Dwayne Wade. So you guys know that Dwayne Wade has been in a very long relationship with actress Gabrielle Union, the very beautiful Gabrielle Union. And um, he went through a very lengthy uh, divorce and child support case with, I mean, uh, not child support, and child custody case with his wife in which he won. Um, and uh, Dwayne has just been winning 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 well now news comes out that Dwayne uh has a woman <laughs> that he might be seeing a jump off in los angeles um he got caught out there the girl's name is sandrini and uh, everybody is pretty up in arms that he would do something like this to girlfriend of so many years gabrielle union they're saying that Dwayne Wade is looking to cut it off with Sandrini because he's found out that Sandrini is also sleeping with quite a few other basketball players. And uh, I guess that would be okay if he hadn't been taking care of her. <laughs> okay, so I guess he was paying the bills. And uh, I'm supposing that if you paying the bills and, uh, you know, making sure that they're living comfortably away from you, then, yeah, I would imagine you would not want your woman sleeping <laughs> with no whole bunch of other basketball players. We don't know what this is going to do to Gabrielle Union and him. I'm wondering when these two are going to get married. I mean, they have been together for a long time. Gabrielle is not getting any younger. And, uh, you know, maybe it is time for them to start talking about tying the knot. Yeah, Dwayne, I'm going to need you to get control of your holes now. Okay, get them, get them together. I told you guys about Carmelo, um, Anthony, and Lala getting a divorce or splitting up last week. And Carmelo has come out this week and said, no, 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 that is not true they've been spotted in london together taking pictures and you know having a good time family time and uh, he's just saying that yeah you know we're both really busy people she has a busy schedule i have a busy schedule obviously and uh, but when we get together we're together and we have a good time you know we communicate and communication is key to this relationship so i hope that that's true i hope them two don't break up um because you know like i said i I like Lala, I like Carmelo, and I, I would like to see them work it out. Another crazy story about Carmelo Anthony that I got to just add is two things. First of all, Doc Rivers, who's the coach for Boston, um, says that uh, that Honey Nut Cheerios comment never happened. And uh, he's saying that Carmelo made it up just so that he can take some of the heat off of him, you know, his, his foul mouth on the basketball court. Um, and because of that, now everybody is saying that they want to, you know, make sure that they know exactly what Carmelo Anthony says on, 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 on the courts. Now, you guys know it's a whole bunch of shit talking on the courts. I'm not saying that, um, you know, people should not say anything because, you know, it's a, it's a high paced sport. It's very competitive. You got all these men on there. Of course, it's going to be some shit being said. I'm just saying that you shouldn't say something about somebody's wife. I think that there's boundaries and there's limits. Um, and that's just not even on court. That's just in life, period. I mean, you you know, you just certain things you're not supposed to say. You don't talk about people's kids. You don't talk about their spouse. And so, you know, as a result of that, I guess they're saying now that the owner of the um, Knicks is going to put um, mics on the court so that they can listen to exactly what is being said um, by Carmelo Anthony. So, you know, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, I already thought there were mics on the floor. I mean, we've heard them say stuff. I mean, sometimes when you're watching a game, you can hear them say, shit, a fuck. You know, they try to, they try to bleak it out, but you can still hear it in the echo sometimes. So, some things get said. Yeah, I think it's being taken too far. I think this, this was something between Kevin Garnett and Carmelo Anthony. And, uh, you know, I still believe that Kevin Garnett said, said it. And, you know, I just kind of, you know, I think he's an asshole anyway. So, that's it. You know, it's just stupid to me. And uh, another couple that has decided to work it out is Kobe Bryant and Vanessa. And you guys, I have to say that I, you know, Vanessa, now she started off rough. She was very young. She had to fight for her spot. Her, his family hated her. 
Um, everybody in LA, <laughs> you know, was not that most fond of her. You know, everybody tolerated her because we all love Kobe Bryant so much. Um, she went through a lot with him, of course, with the rape case and you know all of the things that came after that Vanessa could have divorced him and come out totally on top because they had no prenup and uh, you know she was she was really going to clearly come out the winner in this case but those two have decided to make their marriage work they are not getting divorced any longer and uh, they're moving on with their life and I'm I'm telling you guys I really have for real admiration for Vanessa Bryant because she could have been gone with the wind fabulous you guys she could have been out of there and uh, she stuck it out and there's something to say for somebody who has lived their life so publicly and we all knew uh, just the just the base of the problems that they had and uh, I can imagine what they probably go through behind closed doors and she still stuck it out so um, yeah good good for the Bryants I'm glad that they're working it out but I must tell you guys that I have a lot of respect for Vanessa Bryant We talked about the iced tea and cocoa thing because you know I didn't really think it was gonna keep on going but gosh it keeps on going have you guys heard what's happened with them now you guys know that iced tea loves cocoa okay they got a show with the same name or cocoa loves iced tea whatever it is when I look at those two I always thought that they had a pretty solid relationship you know even with you know their decisions to you know kind of be kind of exploitative of her body and you know, it's the kind of the whole pimp and his woman steez that they got. But I still, you know, I still like them two together. Well, you guys know that Coco was in Las Vegas a few weeks back. And uh, she went and took some pictures with some rapper called AP9, I think his name is. Nobody that we really know. But anyway, she took these pictures. Wasn't really the best pictures. Hugged up with the guy. He's feeling on her butt. You know, he's all in her chest. And... Um, kind of just made it look really bad for this woman to be up on this man like that, okay? And Ice-T was upset about it, you know, and it went back and forth on Twitter, you know, and she apologized, and Ice-T, and I'm assuming that them two tried to move on along with it. However, this AP9 guy is just not going nowhere, you know? He came out later and said that he had pictures of her in a compromising position. I'm thinking to myself, like, how, how much more compromising can Coco get? Look, I have seen her all the way naked, asshole and coochie out and everything, so I don't really know how much more it could be unless it's her with him and now he's just really threatening to really come out with more and more stuff i mean he's definitely trying to get his uh 15 minutes of fame at the cost of this person's relationship with her husband you know yeah it was terrible that you know she made the decision to put herself out there like that but this guy is really not going away i don't really know what's going to happen with ice tea and coco i'm hoping that the relationship can take this because yeah, as time goes on and things keep on coming, keep on coming, keep on coming, I know it can't be anything less than a strain on their relationship. I told you guys about the uh, prenup that uh, Janet Jackson's man uh, tore up and came up with a new one last week. Well, I found out the details of the prenup this week, y'all. It seems that my man has told Janet that if they can stay married for at least five years and she decides to give up the ghost and be like, I'm out, I can't do it no more, you will get 500 million damn dollars. That is wonderful in my eyes. Now, you know if he's willing to give up 500 million dollars after five years, then definitely this man has all types of money. I think they said that he's like one of the richest men in the Middle East, so yeah. Clearly, Janet doesn't need the money because after you become a certain amount of rich, then how much rich more you got to be? I guess we're going to see what happens now if Janet Jackson is willing to tie the knot. I never really thought that the prenup was what the problem was to begin with. And I, maybe Janet Jackson is just having cold feet. What you guys think? Would you get married <laughs> for 500 damn million dollars? Woo! I, you know, y'all, did I ever tell you guys my, my, um, my thought process on marriage and how it should be a contract, kind of like how you buy a car. And, you know, I feel like you should get married and tie yourself into a contract, you know, five year, 10 year, 15 year, whatever you decide to um, agree with. And you are obligated to be into that marriage for that amount of time. And when your time is about to come up, you can either renew or you could just be like, I'm done. I think that's the best way. 
okay I, I think that's the best way I know that <laughs> I know that ain't how people look at unions and, and marriages and everything but I'm telling you five year 10 year 15 year contracts I think life would be so much easier for so many people <laughs> I was looking online somewhere the other day and I saw that Jay-Z on um, Wikipedia, his name is listed as Sean Knowles Carter. So did he hyphenate his name, you guys? I know that Beyonce hyphenated her name um, and she is Beyonce Knowles Carter. So I'm wondering if he did the same. Y'all know that's like the new thing to do now is, to, is for the man and the woman to both hyphenate their names and in that way they both have you know are able to <laughs> to keep their family name going i'm wondering how many men would do that men out there would you guys hyphenate your name with your wife's name just so you could you know keep it on i mean who's to say that the woman should get rid of her name i mean i know that that's a custom but do we have to that was interesting to me i was just like okay now you guys know that wikipedia is not factual um it is somebody maintains wikipedia you can go in and change things on wikipedia and so it's not like it's the bible it's not like it's you know really what it is for sure for sure but i'm wondering <laughs> is mr sean knows carter all right speaking of beyonce you guys know that beyonce has uh, her documentary coming out in uh, february i think they said february 19th it will be on hbo and we already discussed how beyonce likes to be in control of her presentation of herself and this is how she gets close enough uh, to her fans without it being you know off the cuff interviews talk shows radio shows things like that so i know many of us will be watching i don't have hbo so i probably won't be watching but i will hear about it i've seen some of the clips for it and it looks like it's going to be good i mean you know i i, I do like beyonce and i like to see um her creative process and her thoughts and uh, things like that she is going to show her infamous belly shot and you guys i've seen the little infamous belly shot and i don't really think that it's all that convincing fuck it looks like my stomach when i'm not holding it in that's still not to say that i don't believe that she wasn't pregnant i'm just hoping that in this documentary now she doesn't owe anybody anything and that she does not have to prove to anybody that she was pregnant but i just you know I want her to show her stomach when she was like eight months okay just just so that you know we can kind of put this whole thing to rest okay. that little three month four month belly that that wasn't enough for me but um you know we'll see in the documentary what else comes and then in her song with destiny's child that's going to be performed at the super bowl halftime it's called nuclear i listened to it i don't like it i just think that it's not bad it's not good it sounds like it's old. I'm not sure if it's something that they recorded a long time ago and that they just decided to put it back out now. It has like an old sample in it. I'm not sure what the song is. I don't remember. But whatever it is, I was just like, oh, this is not what I was hoping for. I was kind of hoping for a, can you keep up, baby boy, I can lose my breath, and stop and lose my breath. I wanted something fast and catchy and you know something that i can move to i didn't really want no low-key destiny's child and i'm hoping on her new album that i want her to come back out with some fast stepping high moving speed fast songs now i don't want this slow stuff no more now i know you was in love and i know you was having a baby and i know you had a lot of cha uh, changes in your life things that you was going through but i think that we should be settled enough that we get on back to what we we love the most about beyonce which was her crazy in love days which was her ring the alarm days which was her you know her um um what's the song that she had with sean What's the song that she had where she's oh, love you, baby. What is that song? But you know back in those days That's the kind of music that I want Beyonce to come out with um, Again We'll see Her album is due out this year It's Beyonce everywhere you guys Just get ready okay so Did you guys watch The Real Husbands of Hollywood And the Second Generation uh, Wayans? If you did, what did you guys think about it? I thought that uh, Real Husbands of Hollywood, which was, which was like a show that they created off of the little, um, the little five-minute, you know, specials that they would have during the BET Awards. The show is just okay. 
I'm hoping that it gets better. Um, it was not what the little five minute little shorts were at all. That was like what I was most worried about to begin with. You know, a lot of times when things are funny and just like little small little clips and then that's it okay it's nothing that needs to be extended out to anything further than that i like kevin hart i think he's funny and uh but you know we're just gonna see i'm gonna give it a chance because it wasn't horrible and uh but i'm hoping that it gets better second generation wayans the wayans family are very talented to me and funny to me but um i mm -mm. just know just i'ma say no you know it's confusing because it's like now what is it now is it a reality show or it's not okay we acting but it's about our lives you know it's too much that my mind <laughs> can't really understand what i'm supposed to be looking at here you can't hate on the wayans of course because that family has you know second generation i mean this is the this is the kids now that's doing what they hope that they can do you know what their parents have done or you know, their aunts and uncles and things like that so i also hope that show gets better but i was not i i couldn't keep as a matter of fact it was over and i didn't know it i was just like now, did it end like what happened the show just went off and all of a sudden kevin hart's show was coming back on so yeah i'm, I'm hoping that one gets better too I don't have as much hope for that one as I do for Kevin Hart's show. Um, Latoya Luck, it was funny though. I thought that she was the best. I was like, now how the singer who ain't even an actress is do the best in the whole show? <laughs> I didn't know if I was supposed to be laughing or not. I didn't really understand if it was supposed to be true or not. I just, I don't get it. So y'all let me know what you thought about both of their shows below. And, um, you know, we'll tune in next week and see what happens. somebody to get bishop larry trotter um from the sweet holy spirit church i want somebody to get him and sit him down and let him know that it is never okay to take a picture of himself as a grown-ass man with his granddaughter in the bathtub with the bubbles it's not okay i don't really know what's wrong with this bishop trotter he clearly has a problem and is not in touch with reality and knowing that that is quite pedophilish real weird to see a man in the tub with his daughter his granddaughter his you know his daughter's friend any little girl is, is just not okay men have to be so careful with girls these days because you know first of all girls these days are so much more advanced than um even when i was young uh, because they have access to the internet you know the television is way different than it used to be media itself um is just totally different and uh, these girls are not as innocent as the girls used to be men have to be really smart when they surround themselves with young girls you cannot you can't touch them you really shouldn't even be alone with them it's just too much to be responsible for if the child is not your daughter if your blood ain't running through them veins you really probably shouldn't even be alone with any other little girl sad to say but that's the reality um the fact that you in the tub though you up in the water dog with, with your baby your grandbaby no no so he's getting a lot of flack about it and of course he don't understand okay now this ain't the first time that trotter done got in trouble for some you know some questionable uh, uh decisions that he's had um he's in chicago and uh, when chicago was having the teacher strike and um you know it was all these different um protests going around he had decided that he was going to take a stand as well and protest as well which is fine which is fine what he decided to do was get that same grandbaby now and crucify her okay put her up on the cross and uh, showed that as a symbol as a symbol that his the, his daughter was like his granddaughter was like the symbol of how education is being crucified in chicago i, I guess i might understand the message but why are you putting your baby up on the cross again? What the fuck is wrong with him? Now, I just, for real, y'all. Now, I know I wasn't trying not to curse about it because he's a bishop and everything, but this nigga is crazy. Why are you doing this? What's wrong with these people that's, our, that's supposed to be our leaders of our churches? It don't make no damn sense that this man is sitting up in the damn tub with this girl just to smiling and shit. Y'all see the fucking pictures. He just, <laughs> it is so way out. I'm just y'all's crazy so yeah this is a classic case of when keeping it real goes wrong i'm gonna need somebody to get with that trotter and, and put a leash on them okay and keep them away from the babies first off 
off is a show that never even made it to the limelight, y'all. Shawty Lowe's All My Baby's Mamas looks like it has been shelved. Oxygen has caved to the pressure and they have taken the show off of the lineup. The woman who got the petition started was able to get over, I believe, 30,000 signatures, um, which really, in the grand scheme of things, is not that many. But um, I guess because of the negative talk, the negative publicity, the negative publicity that surrounded the show, um, you know, him with all these women, with all these kids, uh, it just oxygen was just like, you know what, this is a little bit too much. Maybe we need to take this show off. Now, I personally feel that it's retarded that people have to get a petition going. Um, if it's something that you don't want to see, then it's just something that you just don't need to watch. I feel like everybody has a right to put whatever they want on the, on the TV, and it's just up to you to govern yourself accordingly. If you don't want your children to watch a certain thing in your home, then you're responsible for your children, okay? And um, I know that they can get it from other places, um, but the majority of the time, the kids are watching TV in your house, and you have control over that. So, I think it's unfortunate that his show was taken off. He's t decided to take matters into the, his own hands and get his own petition going and uh, trying to get the show back on. Somebody might pick the show up eventually. Uh, they might have to tweak it a little bit. Like I said, if they present it a little bit differently, um, maybe it will be back on. But um, as of now, you guys will not be seeing Shawty Low and his 10 baby mamas and his 11 kids. I'm sorry. <laughs> Loving Hip Hop New York. Um, you guys, there's been some strange stories coming out of there. Now, first off, uh, I complained on my review about how many people were on the show. I felt like it's too many characters. Uh, they are now saying that Yandy and Mandisi's have been yanked from the cast because of Mandisi's uh, child molestation uh, case that's coming up. Rumor had got started yesterday that the producers, you know, hadn't realized that this case was coming up until after the show first aired. And the reason why they didn't show Yandy and uh, Mendeecees on this second episode is because they are editing, editing them out of the, uh, you know, the rest of the season. And that they were getting flagged about not doing a proper background check for their people on their show. Someone tweeted Mona yesterday and she said it's absolutely not true. So... I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. The way they presented it on the internet, like this was definitely what it was, that Mandisi's and Yandy was not going to be on the show. Um, and then, you know, Mona said it's not true. Now, Mona is the producer of the show, obviously, so I would think that she would know better than anybody. I guess we'll just have to see. Also, Rich Dollars. Rich Dollars was arrested in Memphis uh, because he refuse to take a DNA test. There is a woman out in Memphis, Tennessee who is saying that he is the father of her child and I guess they're trying to establish paternity and a brother man will not take the test so they arrested his ass. Speaking of loving hip-hop, loving hip-hop ATL, looks like Memphis, okay, Toya's husband, the one who K. Michelle had always accused of beating her up and taking her money uh, from her record deal, he has quietly dropped his his charges against her and is not pressing charges against I guess defamation of character now this doesn't mean that he's guilty this doesn't mean that you know he's admitting that he did whatever she said that he did but um, yeah I think it's just really interesting that he dropped that court case I, I had a feeling that he was gonna drop the court case um, she was just way too sure about it okay and uh, I just never really was convinced to him you know I've Personally, you guys know that I believe K. Michelle. Now, I know that K. Michelle is a spitfire, and uh, I'm not saying that anybody ever deserves to get hit, but I can say that I understand. <laughs> you know how it is when you just be like, you know, I know that you ain't supposed to do something, but you still can understand how shit happens. Looks like that's the end of that. In Real Housewives of Atlanta news, uh, a few things. Uh, you guys saw on the last episode, they tried to make it seem like uh, Walter might be gay. Now there's rumors going around that Walter might be on the down low and that, you know, this, that, and the other. I still don't believe that Walter is gay. I never really heard any, co any type of comments about him being gay beforehand. Um, I had heard about him being a hoe. And I had heard about him, you know, really being out there as far as the women were concerned. But never did I hear anything about any men or anything like that until now. So I really feel like this is a spin. 
Um, probably Kenya's people putting that out there and really trying to be in people's ear about the fact that the man is gay. That is not to say that he's not an asshole, but I really don't believe that he's gay. Retaliation for all the gay talk and everything, Walter has tweeted Bravo Andy, okay Andy, and let him know that he would come on Watch What Happens Live and uh, prove the fact that he, he, you know, was approached by Kenya. So I'm assuming that he must have emails or text messages or something like that. I just really want this whole Walter talk to go away. It's just like it's said and done. It's over. Like, why is it dragging on? I don't, I don't really care. Okay, I don't really care. I want, I just want to move on for all of that. And lastly, American Idol. You guys, American Idol is back on. You guys, make sure that you tune in to watch the antics between Nicki Minaj and Mariah Carey. I think that's all we all are pretty much watching for now. Um, and of course, all the horrible and ridiculous singing that, you know, comes with the auditions and everything. So, um, you guys know that Nicki Minaj's uh, hairdresser, her wig maker, has quit. And, uh, you know, he gave the regular statement of how he wants to move on with more creative ideas and blah, 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 blah. Everybody took it to mean that, yeah, I got to leave this bitch alone. She crazy and I can't take it no more. I don't really know. Now, I'm sure there's plenty of people out there who is just as talented as he is. However, they seem to have had their niche. Okay. And he had her looking the way she always did. Um, even though she was, re her hairdos were really crazy. Um, they still looked, you know, it was still cool it was still nice so now we're gonna see what this child look like you know is she gonna be pretty basic now i mean or is she you know is it is it is, is she gonna be able to find somebody else that can create the magic because we all know that Nicki minaj's hairstyles is very much a part of her persona and if that hair ain't right then i'm gonna you know she gonna have to get it together okay we we expect the crazy from her at this point anyway american idol is on back on full force you guys make sure that you guys tune in to that all right you guys so we do this every week so make sure that you rate comment and subscribe and make sure that you come back until next time rock stars